What's going on there folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this uh, Thursday evening. It's about 6.28 p.m. West Coast time here. June 16, 2022 is the day. Got an earthquake coming in there to the Aaliyah Permanent Station on the seismographs there to the left. Bottom left screen uh, just off the screen now, but uh, kind of looks like it's up there around the three range for the big island of Hawaii. A little magnitude earthquake uh, coming in there into that region. Looking at the earthquake 3D globe, shows a 1.9 earthquake here in the region. Looks like uh, just off the coast of Morocco there. Let's go ahead and check out some activity. Uh, once again there, I want to show you guys the uh, earthquake here into the Aaliyah Permanent. That's a big island of Hawaii picking up on a pretty good signature of an earthquake. Like I said, it's probably around the three range uh, at, the, uh, at the most there. So. All right, let's go ahead and, and zip over here to the latest map here from the USGS. Looks like there's an earthquake coming in. There we go. Look at that. I just kind of just seen it. I got a notification right now on my phone, a 3.2 on the EMSC model, but a 3.3 there on the USGS model now just coming in. So that's kind of what we've seen there on the seismograph. Uh, aside from that, uh, looks like the majority of the activity throughout the afternoon has been relatively light. But uh, having a three come in like that could uh, could be telling of a coming uh, little swarm there. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. West Coast activity. Of course, we had some movement into the area of uh, the Blanco Fracture Zone again. Did show a 3.2. Now, this area did see a little bit of swarming here over the last couple days. Um, specifically confined here. To this region the largest one was a 5.6 earthquake in that little swarm uh, but now we're starting to see a little bit of migration here to the south and that would kind of make sense there with the uh, directional fault system here pointing down uh, towards the southeast here and as far as the pressure gradients go so gonna watch that pretty closely uh, but so far at least just today a 3.2 where'd that go that's kind of odd I just had the USGS crash on me there bring this back here uh, aside from that uh, some activity showing up here around Mount St. Helens again uh, only a fraction of course what's going on there there are a lot more microquakes uh, Northern California not a whole lot of activity aside from the Cobb Mountain earthquake activity the uh, Calpine hydrothermal operations out here Sierra Nevada once you get down south of uh, South Lake Tahoe area, it looks like things starting to pick up a little bit right around the Long Valley Super Volcano and into the Ridgecrest area where we did see a little activity kick up here today uh, outside of Bakersfield in the 3.1 range of the magnitude there. Looks like that was off of an unnamed fault system there from the 1952 earthquake fractures. Uh, so things filling in a little bit here around this region. Bay area is kind of backed off a little bit. Uh, actually, it looks like migration has kind of moved to the south a little bit around the San Jose area at the uh, uh, Looks like the Hayward fault zone Calaveras fault zone, although mostly here at the southern end of it. So a little bit of development happening there uh, Southern California Riverside area seen a little bit of swarming up here north of the uh, Moreno Valley area Loma Linda a couple ones kicking off there over the course of the last 24 hours and if you notice things are starting to fill in here starting to creep a lot closer to the southern segment here of the San Andreas Fault uh, Brawley seismic zone did see a little bit of activity earlier this morning no major swarms have kicked up just a couple spotty earthquakes in and around the southern segment here of the San Andreas Fault of course we all know that one is going to be a big one when it does decide to go we've been saying it for many 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 years and it's been well over 300 years of accumulated stress in this segment uh, and when it goes it's going to go out with a bang let me tell you uh, we did see some activity up here around the tonopah area including a 4.5 i think they kept it at 4.5 yes they did uh, that was earlier this morning time frame since then we've seen a couple more ones in the mix there around the Mina, Nevada area, uh, northwest of Tonopah, but uh, nothing major coming in following that uh, four-pointer this morning. 
uh, through Utah and up into Yellowstone. A uh, little spotty activity, nothing major going on. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone thumbnails, which is the Yellowstone overview of the seismogram stations across the park here. Of course, the caldera and the black line. Uh, looks like there's a little spitter spatter, and I say spitter spatter because sometimes Yellowstone spits out these earthquakes um, out of the blue and in it, it could be like two or three all at once or 20 of them all at once and that's kind of what we've seen down here uh, within the last hour a couple hours or so and uh, this afternoon time frame a couple earthquakes kicking up here and also a little earthquake activity here these are not big earthquakes by any means but they did show up on several of the seismograph stations there at Pitchstone Plateau Mary Lake area uh, and this activity looks as though it's confined uh, to the center of the Yellowstone caldera which would be around the little West Thumb area uh, as I showed you here on this map so uh, aside from that uh, looks like uh, not a whole lot going on but again Yellowstone can uh, definitely make herself known really quickly uh, let's zoom back in here to hold on a second here all magnitudes map here a little spotty activity throughout texas today uh, looks like we had a 3.5 up here around the uh, midland area of texas uh ackley ackerley is that right ackerley never heard of it texas is a huge state beautiful state at that uh 2.9 smiley texas getting in on some action out there um let's see new madrid zone looks pretty quiet today folks we did see this earthquake late last night in the Illinois area, that's a 2.5 at 20 kilometers. Uh, following the update this morning, we've seen activity ramp up here around the Georgetown area, south of Georgetown, in the Cayman Islands. Uh, seen a 5.0 come in here in this fracture area of the plate boundary. Um, looks like it was followed up by a couple fours kicking off here, so not 100% certain if this activity is over. Uh, latest quake was just a few, uh, uh, actually earlier this afternoon, it looks like. Uh, with that 4.3 but uh this area let's see here what we got for historical seismic activity we definitely can see some larger quakes in this area sixes and whatnot uh, let's see what we got for magnitudes possibly um yeah i would say at least five to six maybe possibly a 6.0 6.0 to 7.0 uh within this region uh, it is in that fracture area and uh, looks like uh, looks like things at least calming down within the last couple hours so still got to watch that there around the Caribbean plate uh, some movement into the Puerto Rico area looks like about 15 earthquakes or so mostly confined here to the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico South America still remains relatively quiet we've seen one earthquake uh, this one coming in uh, earlier this afternoon a 4.2 in the Argentina area, underneath Argentina. 187.7 kilometers down into the Peru Chile Trench. Pretty deep earthquake there in that region. Uh, Alaska area has seen some movement uh, developing here uh, over the course of the 24 hours, including a 3.0. Some other spotty activity through Anchorage, Denali area, and through the Cook Inlet and along the Aleutian Trench, all showing some microquake activity. Uh, we did see some further westward pressure movement here in the Japan area with a 5.0 near um yeah <laughs> I showed this this morning I believe I did um with the 33 kilometer depth looks like there's been a little activity here around the Philippine plate including here around Manila Philippines seen a 5.1 uh that was earlier way earlier this morning so a little bit of seismic increase in pressure throughout the region also some activity up here in China where they've seen a 5.0, uh, most recent quake. And a little bit of return of swarming, or well, at least the earthquake activity here. Uh, and there is a Kish, Kish Iran, 4.2 in the mix there where that uh, swarming area took place here over the last few days. They had quite a bit of swarming there in the three or the uh, 4 and 5 range. But today, just a 4.2. Uh, Mediterranean Sea all looks pretty quiet. South of or the... Uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet as well. Not a whole lot going on through the region there of the Atlantic Ocean. 2.9 looks like these guys have downgraded the 3.3 uh, that came in or 3.2. Can't remember exactly what it was, but 
Uh, 2.9 at 33.2 kilometers. A whole lot of 33s and 32s going on here with the numbers today. Uh, let's see what we got. Trimmer map here for tonight. Um, looking at uh, doo -doo -doo, 10 epicenters. Is it a party? Woohoo! Not really. But it is upstream. Notice that. It's a little bit more further upstream. Most of the time we see this trimmer activity inland more on the map, which would indicate down dip trimmer a little bit further deep but uh this activity just kind of showing up here a little bit closer to the locked area of the cascadia subduction zone uh microquake activity does continue there at mount st helens i've been covering that for a little while it's been uh it's been almost like non-stop we get days of of activity and days of none and days of none <laughs> days with no activity uh, looks like over the last couple hours there, obviously, there's some earthquake activity, microquakes kicking up over the last couple hours. And, of course, over the last day or so, uh, this is the afternoon time frame and late afternoon, all uh, showing some microquake activity. And it looks pretty active compared to the past couple days. So, um, And, of course, USGS, uh, I believe they're only reporting... I think three or four of those little microquake swarms there that I just showed you on the map there at Mount St. Helens. Yeah, three. There we go. Good job, USGS. That's a start. Who knows? Who? Uh, to be honest, who really knows why they're not reporting uh, um, all the activity? But uh, it is um, on the map, at least for a little bit, fraction of the earthquakes. Let's see what else we got here, folks. Um, the EMSC CS... EM model still showing roughly about the same uh, activity. It looks like there's a 4.4 earthquake way up into the area around the Northwest Territories of Canada. Let me double check this here on the Earthquakes Canada map and see what we got. I don't believe the USGS was showing that. Um, there is that 4.4 uh, kicked off um, when was that? 1845 UTC time. So we're looking at probably earlier this afternoon time frame. Just want to show you guys real quick a little earthquake coming in here to the seismographs. Uh, coming in to the, uh, well, we got the Hawaii earthquake here. That, like I said, this kind of came in as a 3.2, 3.3. Kind of looks like it should be up there around that magnitude, but... Uh, they downgraded it to a 2.9, at least the USGS did. Uh, but I do want to show you guys a little earthquake coming in to the Petrolia station here, Petrolia, California. Notice that little spike right here. Definitely a little sign of uh, some seismic activity. Also a 3.3 showing up in the area um, off the coast there. We'll go ahead and check that out in just a second. But yeah, 4.4 coming in um, in the Northwest Territory area at a uh, pretty shallow depth there at about one kilometer and i don't think the usgs was stating or showing this earthquake uh no negative negative sir that is a big negative on the 4.4 so yeah i don't know you think they would show stuff like that on the uh, usgs map considering it's our neighbor to the north and it's above the 4.0 threshold but then again maybe not See what we got going on here around this area of the world with that 3.3 uh, coming in just now. This is the uh, European model showing some activity, including that 3.3 in the strait up here. Got a lot of activity kicking up there uh, just off the coast of the region there. Uh, a couple circles here in the pink, or I should say the purple, showing some activity. Eastern Turkey. Uh, the Georgia region, it looks like, showing, what, showing up with a 3.9. So a little bit of swarming activity throughout this region here. Uh, there's that 4.2 in the um, Iran area. But uh, again, USGS not really stating or showing any of that movement. All right, solar, solar weather. What do we got for solar weather? Looks like we have reached a KP index here of four. Um, looks like that could possibly pop up the Aurora forecast a little bit. It looks like it's loading for some odd reason. 
some oddball reasons. Solarham.net's kind of a little on the slow side for uh, some reason. Don't know what's going on there. It looks like uh, maybe they're having some issues. There we go. It looks like stuff is going. There we go. Um, a little bit of Aurora forecast, um, or at least the uh, for the higher latitudes, it looks like. Solar flare activity remains a credible threat. Looks like we just had a C flare, a C4.6 uh, kick up here uh, just a short time ago. Very short duration C flare. And um, still always the possibility of some much larger um, flaring here, you know, kicking up, considering the massive amount of activity that we're looking at here on the sun. Check out all these sunspots. Woo, that's a lot. Quite a bit facing the Earth side right now. Uh, looks like forecast calls for 30 or 85% uh, chance of a C flare, 30% chance for an M flare, 10% chance for uh, X flare. Uh, as these uh, sunspots continue to morph and grow into, into uh, hopefully something that might produce an X flare. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that as the days progress. But for now, folks, hope everyone enjoys your day and, uh, of course, stay safe out there. The world's getting crazy. That's, that's all I can say. I turn on the news for one second and I turn it right back off. It's like, okay, that is enough for me. Even the internet, social media sites sometimes, oh, it's just like it's, sometimes it's hard to watch this stuff that's going on across the world. But you know what? You kind of have to be informed. You don't want to be left in the dark. You have to be uh, definitely aware of what's going on out here in the world in these crazy, crazy times, let me tell you. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. Have a good night. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Got uh, a little bit of cooler temperatures coming into California right now. A little cold front, a little system bringing in some 70 degree temperature here for the next couple days. So I'm happy about that. And then, uh, well, and then next week we cook into the 90s and hundreds again. So at least, at least we're getting these much cooler temperature trends on this little roller coaster ride here this summer, which I'm super happy about. Take care, guys. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you a little bit later. Peace out.